All right, listen, we got a lot to cover, a lot going on in Providence, and there's a program you need to know about. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. I bet you there's nobody in this audience that doesn't know a caregiver or who doesn't provide care to somebody kind of on your own. Uh, I've had that experience in my family and uh, so many of us had. Uh, there's a break for caregivers that you need to know about and uh, that program starts off with a uh, kind of a big kick next week and we'll tell you about it a little bit later on. Nice to have you and thank you very much. This is our Friday program, I believe, and the reason I'm checking the day with my esteemed producer, Lexi Chris, is because it's Thursday and we've been doing a lot of shows for different days. Sometimes we get some wacky production schedules here, uh, but uh, this is an original show on Friday. So welcome in. Nice to have you. Uh, a lot going on in Providence, and whenever there's stuff going on in Providence, i got to go to my guy, Dan McGowan. Uh, here's the latest entry into the mayor race, Kobe Dennis, who you've met here on the program. Kobe for Mayor 2018 Collective Leadership. Kobe for Mayor.com. I see you out there in the streets. Have a good afternoon. That's his general announcement, but he's getting uh, at least active in one specific episode that occurred this week. Here's a headline from WPR.com and Dan's work. Uh, Providence mayoral candidate calls for firing of Central High Administrator. Well, guess what? That was. That was actually, again, we're taping on Thursday. That was Thursday morning. It's now Friday night for you. But guess what? By the time we got going, uh, the administrator beat him to it. Yeah, resigned. And resigned. Yep. Welcome in, buddy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having uh, me. There's, you know, social media video out there that uh, we're not going to play here. But we have a story of an administrator who ends up on the ground with a kid. Yeah. That's never good. No. I mean, it, it, like, you know, our parents said nothing good happens after midnight, so, you know, make sure you get in, <laughs> yeah. which we never did. Right. And we'd have to probably concede that there wasn't a lot of good going on after midnight. Right, that's why we were out. You know, if you're over a golf, <laughs> if you're over a golf ball for more than, uh, you know, five or ten seconds as you're trying to hit a shot, I can promise you nothing good is happening there either. <laughs> kind of some default positions in life that I've learned. Being on the ground with a kid as a school administrator, bad, no, bad no, deal. Nothing generally good happens. Yeah. Well, right? and as they, right, as the, if you talk to any police officer, not that this is, is a police situation necessarily, but they always say force is never pretty. That's what it looks like in a, you know, video. Whenever you're rolling around on the ground with a, uh, with a student, uh, if you're, even if you're trying to restrain them, it ends up on video, ends up on social media. Crazy storm. I hate that. I don't disagree with you. On you know, that. It, it, well, you know what? You don't disagree with me, but yeah, you, know, you use it for your news gathering. Covered it. I, yep. I use it for my commentary. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's this thing that everyone will admit they don't think they like. They don't think it's appropriate. They mm -hmm. don't think it adds to really a lot of objectivity. Yeah. Um, but everything is situational because sometimes it does. Sure. I mean, you know, yeah. we've got cops with cameras now, mm -hmm. and does that actually prove to to make them less violent? The few who are. I'm not sure the data is in on that either. Right. Uh, but what happened here? Can you, do, what do you know? Yeah, so the gist of it, the, from what we know, which is, to be honest, very limited, that video you know, ha, that's out there and that has been played on, on our network and just about everywhere, um, and certainly has made its way through social media, is a snippet of, from what we understand, a, an altercation that involved um, a 15-year-old male student who, um, who elbowed another staff member. Um, we don't know what the context for why. Was it you know, a struggle and an elbow, or was it an attack? We, honestly, we don't know. Um, results in an assistant principal uh, attempting to restrain the, the, the young person. That's where you, the video picks up, a pretty relatively short video of him on the ground. And certainly, the, the assistant principal was kind of loud. Um, you know, like you said, looks bad. Um, Basically, what it prompted was uh, he was immediately put on leave, which is a normal, you know, way of doing business in almost any school department for oh, sure. Well, 24 hours, he's gone. Absolutely, yeah. yeah I mean, and and then and he quit. Right, he quit. Uh, yeah, so he gets put on leave Monday. Last night, uh, uh, Kobe Dennis, the who's running for mayor, um, puts out a, you know. A, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I jumped the gun. So this happened Monday. Incident happened Monday. Yes. Started to report out on Thursday. We had it. On Monday, oh, uh, we had it on Monday, but we were not comfortable, quite honestly, with the um, with just that video. Um, what Good we for you. what we should have done on Monday is ask: Is the person on leave? We didn't. I didn't. My fault. Um, so we kind of sat on it. 
and Thursday, um, we, you know, we did ask that question. Now the person's on leave. That does make it a relevant news story. We cover people, certainly I cover city employees when they are in trouble and things like that. We decided to go uh, to go with it. I believe we ran, we did run the video with blurred faces for whatever it's worth. Yeah, I will, listen, I, let me just say this, because he won't. Um, Eyewitness News, uh, uh, and I can say this completely objectively, puts a lot more diligence and, and restraint into their into their uh, spot news coverage than other uh, news organizations in our in our market do. It's philosophy, uh, mm -hmm. but you will double double triple check that mm -hmm. something's right. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do any mea culpas here uh, for some other news news organization who have uh, got the video on the air first, because right. uh, it ain't game breaking. No. It's, it's a Central High School. Is what it is. All right, is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, but the bigger picture is. What do educators do when they get into these uh, into these tumbles? And Such you know, a good we all kind of live for the old days, which, yeah. which was you know, I can name I can name the teachers that I had who probably had me on the ground mm -hmm. on numbers of occasions, yeah. and I'm not kidding. Not that I was a rabble rouser, but you've been hit with a ruler and stuff. Like that, well, rulers, you know, beginning and I'm aging you, you know, actually. First, <laughs> first, I still have the marks, you know. <laughs> You know, first grade on. Okay, well, that's when men were men and sheep were sheep and whatever. You know, you know, we all went uphill both ways in four feet of snow and you know and all that kind of thing. Um, am I allowed to say sheep or sheep? I guess I did. Anyway, uh, the point is, nostalgia is not getting you anywhere these no, days. No. And video cameras uh, yeah, are, are your are your enemy. Yeah. It seems in a lot of ways. Well, you run into this situation. I mean. Think about it if it plays out in a different way. Now, again, without knowing everything that happened, let's just use a hypothetical high school situation. Two kids, me and you, square off to fight. We, we're going at it. There are certainly teachers, who, teachers, administrators, who will just let it happen because they don't want to break it up. They don't want to be seen as potentially putting a kid on the ground. Because right, you step in, you end up on the ground. You end up, right. It's one of the ways that you restrain somebody. Yeah, and so it becomes very uncomfortable. In this case, you see somebody getting restrained. Now, again, is it possible that the assistant principal overreacted? Maybe. I mean, he certainly resigned for some reason. So we don't know why he resigned. We yet. don't know. At we press do. Time. What might I can. Have, you might have learned something on Friday afternoon prior to seeing this on Friday evening, and we'll follow up next week if we don't have it correct. Yeah, and um, what I do know, and I can I can say this, we we have reported it that the mayor was at least considering um, calling for his resignation or calling for him to be fired. Um, excuse me, fired, and um, and it resulted in the the person the the assistant principal. I just have a really resigning. bad feeling about what's happened in the city of Providence with that principal of the elementary school who ended up who ended up you know in district in charge, court, yeah. uh, and we still haven't had any any final resolve on the up the line reporting yeah. that she did. By the way, in that case. Uh, on the, it, it, on, the, on the, it, the physical sexual assault right. alleged from the gym teacher. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm not running around with a whole lot of trust about what goes on in the Providence School System. Well, I'll tell right you now. this, in, 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 in that case, if you look at the, the you know, allegations of, of a, a gym teacher molesting allegedly four elementary school students, like you're talking about the principal was, mm -hmm. uh, was charged with not reporting to DCYF, um, we have not heard anybody call for the termination of the gym teacher, who is still an employee but mm -hmm. is on leave the principal who has been charged whether whether she should have been or not we haven't seen any of that and yet today you know the mayor was very quickly on camera to talk about it so. man is that poignant all right i'll i'll leave that there we come back a couple of things going on in the city and then uh, we'll talk about caregiving stay with us five hundred dollars for just being a nuisance or a disturbance doesn't seem to have been a f effective. Councilwoman Joanne Ryan wants to make the ordinance more strict. This new ordinance that I put forth stiffens the penalties across the board. Instead of a six-month monitoring period after the first warning, she wants 12 months. Instead of a $100 fine for tearing off the sticker, she wants a $500 one. And she wants additional $500 fines for every other violation police find, like underage drinking and violence towards law enforcement. Never ends. <laughs> the collegiate we, challenge. We were talking about being young before. We were probably in those houses. Come on, man. Have <laughs> uh, we had an uptick in problems in the you, there PC has. So I, I live over thing. in that neighborhood, um, and uh, while and I... And you'll be at every keg party that's going on there, probably. I, I try to lay low, typically, have my own beer at home. But, Very nice. Um, 
No, I, I will say that it, I've talked to Providence Police. Uh, certainly the council people over there, there's a three of them that actually represent sort of that area, including Councilwoman Ryan. Um, there is a fear that, that, yeah, there's some out of control partying. Kind of your typical stuff, except that sometimes, um, I believe this year, uh, a, a uh, Providence Police officer has been hit with a bottle. Um, a couple of years ago, during when PC won the national title in hockey, there was sort of that celebration, which there was right. a level of violence. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's college kids being college kids, but I know, given the resources that the Providence Police have, there is real frustration about sort of what's going on over there. They'd rather be, you know, policing the neighborhoods uh, that aren't where the college kids are. And so uh, there is a real level of frustration. The city council is trying to do a bunch of different things, including this ramping up the orange sticker law. So where does the responsibility really lie? It seems to me that when the universities actually apply the pressure from within, that's when it all stops. That's and I right. think URI has done a pretty good job <laughs> of, of, of working with the town of Narragansett yeah. to, uh, to say, hey, listen, that what you do out on the beach, or that what you do up the line, has yep. impact on whether you graduate from this institution, yeah. pal, right? So. so the challenge with that neighborhood, that Elmhurst area, is you know Providence College is right there. Generally speaking, in fact, Councilwoman Ryan will say, PC has been pretty good about handing out discipline, and stuff like that. The challenge is, is that's a hot neighborhood to be a college kid in. Imagine getting to live at 21, 20 by yourself or with your friends um, where everyone around you is partying too. You've got Bryant University students there, you've got Rick students there, JWU students, you've got Brown University students who live on that side of the city. Well, it seems to me that Bryant and JWU and Rick have got to participate yeah. in this. Yeah, no, there's no question about it. Because you're it. right, they're all down there now. Yeah, that's the hot place to, to be. Right. I mean, kids are right coming. Right next to my house. Yeah, the, the things are coming from uh, the kids are coming from out of state. Yep. You go to Bryant mm -hmm. and living down in Providence. That's exactly right. And yep. I don't think the general population actually knows that's going on. No, you're totally right. And it's the reason being again is is it's it's a cool place to live right now. I mean, virtually everything on Eaton Street and all that area around there are all you know owned by the same group of people or same person rent out to college kids. It's a great market if you're a landlord. It's a, it's a brilliant thing to do, um, but it does create, I mean, you go there on a Friday, Saturday night, uh, you're, you're seeing a lot of kids with cups, mm. and you see a lot of houses lined with orange stickers as well. Mm. It never ends. It never ends. It never ends. Not yeah. like when we were kids, too. Yes. Yes. All right. You got some good stuff next week, I understand. So we'll, Monday, uh, we'll, very excited. We'll be paying attention to yeah. WPRI.com and I'm guessing I witnessed news. Well, if you tell, we'll have a story at 5 o'clock on Monday. All right, good. Pay attention to that. <laughs> Dan's got to go to a party. It's Friday night. Uh, caregivers, get a break when we come back. <laughs>